Hey, it's Brock here with Rock Hill Farms, and today I want to cover all of the things I think every guy should keep in his truck to be prepared for whatever might happen. A couple weeks ago, I made a video called Be That Guy Who Solves Problems. And in that scenario, I had a family member who needed a vehicle moved from one location to another, and I was able to go do that for them. And you just never know what situation you might find yourself in. My youngest son actually had a car accident just recently and I was able to pull him out of the ditch and get the car home without needing a tow truck or anything else. And you just never know, especially with winter coming and bad road conditions, when you might need to be that person who can help somebody out. It's one thing to have the stuff, but if you don't have it with you, it, it doesn't really help. So when my son had his accident, I had to go out there first, make sure he was okay, make sure he was communicating with the police and the other car, and then I had to come back and get everything I would need, and my son and his mother were there waiting for at least an hour while I drove home, got everything put together, and then came back. And that got me thinking, I don't want to be in that situation again. So I put together this kit of what I'm going to carry with me at all times. And then, as a backup, I watched every video that I could find with this same topic. And a lot of those guys were really elaborate. And like if they were stranded at, in the Antarctic for a month, they could get by with their kit. And I don't think I need all that. But I think this is a pretty good starting point. So let's pop it open and see what we got. First, I got a waterproof tote. And I didn't spend very much money on this. Got th this at Lowe's, mainly besides the fact that the lid overhangs, it's got a seal in it. And this tote cost me, I think, 36 or 40. I was looking at two different ones. I think this one may have been $44. But not a whole lot of money for what you're getting. 90% of everything in this box I already had, but I picked up a couple things. Okay, the first item here I think is pretty obvious, but it's a set of jumper cables. Now, one of those rechargeable jump starters, those are really cool, but I don't feel as confident that I'm going to show up and my jump starter is charged. They have them that go cigarette lighter to cigarette lighter, and there's a lot of options there, but for me, jumper cables. You want to get them long and heavy-duty wire, and preferably in a bag so you can keep them organized. Now as I put together this kit, I also looked at kits you could just buy that were completely put together. And I looked at Walmart and O'Reilly's and those kits to me were insufficient. I think they're good. I think I might put those kits in my kids' cars because they're probably not going to do any vehicle recovery but maybe a pair of jumper cables could still help them out. So first thing is get a good set of jumper cables. And the ones that come in the, in the kit are light gauge wire and they're not long enough. So that's why I, I won't buy a kit for myself. By the way, as I go through this, let me know anything that you can think of that I left out of this kit. This one isn't mandatory, but you know, honestly, I really do think I think I might prefer to have some of the collapsible cones, but if I slide off the road in snow and ice and I'm just over the top of a hill, or if anyone else does and I'm there to help them, it's a pretty dangerous situation if people can't see you're coming. So, set of cones. Next thing I've got is a nice light. This is a cheap light. I think I paid. $20 for this and it runs off DeWalt batteries, although it's not actually a DeWalt light. Pretty darn bright. Got different settings on it. And it's even got a USB port, so in an emergency situation, you could use this as this you could use this battery to charge your cell phone or something like that. Anything like this that is available on Amazon. I'll put links in the description to my favorite products. Next thing we have here is a bottle jack. I really debated on this because if you're going to help someone and they have a flat tire, 
Their car should have a jack, but those jacks kind of suck. So ideally, you'd have a floor jack with you all the time. But floor jack's big and it's heavy, and how often are you gonna use it to carry it all the time? It's not going in your box, it's gonna be in the back of your truck, and you know, an ultimate scenario is what you see the farmers have, or tradesmen, where they have a diesel flatbed, and it's got a welder, and an air compressor built onto the bed of the truck and just stacked out for everything you could ever need. But I'm not going that extreme. You know, that's this is my also my everyday driver. So I'm not going to carry a floor jack. It's too big. You can just trust that the jack that's with the vehicle will do it. But I think the best solution for size and versatility is a bottle jack. Okay. Tire tool. I like the big four-way like this. And it does fit in this pack. I like it because it gives you more leverage than those fold-out tools. But there is an option if you want to take up less space. They make a kit that's compact, which has an extendable handle, so you're basically using a long breakover bar. And then it's got reversible sockets for all your sizes. If you're really wanting to make this compact, and you're trying to keep everything like under your car seat or your truck seat in your vehicle, then that's an option. But once again, I'm not going to trust that the vehicle that I'm there to help has what they need as far as all the tools to take the tire off. Like my son's car doesn't have anything except for a can of fix-a-flat and a small air compressor. They don't give you a spare tire, no tire tools, nothing really. So, next thing I've got here is some ratchet straps. Now this is a case where a kit like this is not just for someone driving off the road and you helping them. It's about, what do I get out to do something and realize I forgot? Now you go, you don't know you're gonna go buy something and you stop at Lowe's and man, I wish I had some straps. You know how many times I've went back in the store and bought a set of straps at Lowe's to haul back what I'm carrying. I know they'll, they'll, you can possibly get some twine from them or something, but best case is have a couple different sizes of ratchet straps with you. Now you guys know my exact scenario. I'm hauling equipment all the time. And I was keeping all of my chains, binders, straps, everything I used for hauling equipment loose in the bed of the truck. And that made it a mess when I need to use the truck bed for anything else. So I think I'm going to mount a similar box like this, possibly on my trailer that is just for the binders. I get my straps and my chain and my binders set up exactly how I want them and keep them just in that box. The next thing I've got is a set of wheel chocks. A lot of times, you know, you can use about anything as a wheel chalk if you got a stick of wood or something setting by. But these right here are really cheap. They're a hard rubber and they're like solid rubber. They hold up dramatically better than the plastic ones you see. I think it was $7 for two of these wheel chocks. All right, so the next thing is my favorite thing in the kit, which is this DeWalt portable inflator. And I've had some of these small inflators that go off a cigarette lighter and been unimpressed with them in the past, but I love this one. I've used it to air up so many tires. I had, had to have been 50 times I've used this. And my teenage kids and my wife are both comfortable using this because it's so easy. You can see right there when I turn it on, it says zero. You probably can't see. But you turn this dial right here and it's giving you a digital reading of what you want the tire pressure to be. So right there, if I want 38 pounds in that tire, just turn the dial till it says 38. You hit, hit this start button and it will run until it gets to 38 and then shut itself off. It can also, be run off your cigarette lighter and it has a light flashlight right there and I found I get a lot of cycles out of this for one charge so great tool right here okay next thing toe strap I've got a chain in here which I'm gonna pull out next but I think these toe straps might be better they're inexpensive, really. 
I think this costs less than a really heavy duty chain for, especially if you're looking for chain with this weight rating, you're gonna pay a lot more than this recovery strap. So it's got a nice ball on one end. This looks like it's specifically made to go over your ball on your truck. And I'm not really a fan of using the, the ball on your receiver to pull with, but it's got that for this. You could also just put a D-ring through this if you want. And this is rated for 30,000 pounds, and I think I paid maybe $30 for this. And I've had it for a year, and I haven't used it yet. I actually forgot it was under the seat in the truck, and I used a chain last time. Next, we have a can of Fix-A-Flat. I don't like Fix-A-Flat. Really, not a fan of the product, but it's not that expensive, and there could be a scenario where it gets you through. So I do keep a can of Fix-A-Flat. Okay, next I've got a little small shovel. You dig out under a tire if you're trying to get unstuck. I've got a little camp axe. This one's actually engraved Rock Hill Farm. So you use it if you need to cut. Say you got a tree limb down or something like that. Or you just never know when you might need it. Doesn't take up that much space. Most of us probably already have one. So, got a little hatchet, ice scraper. This moves up to the front seat whenever we're in bad weather. I've got the little shovel here. In addition to digging out under a tire, if I'm ever on a job and you need to clean out a trench that you did with the backhoe, the idea is bring a shovel. Be smart, be prepared, bring a shovel. Well, what if you forget? This is better than nothing. Okay. I've got a shackle here. Be used in a couple different scenarios, but always handy to have. I've got a heavy grade chain. Hooks on each end. Leave that in here. The next thing is actual tools. Once again, this is not just for roadside emergencies. Might be out doing a job, something breaks on the tractor, I need to fix it. Something breaks on the car, need to change a battery on the car, minor repairs. The number of things you might need to do while you're out and about is pretty long. So this is the little kit that you buy at Walmart or somewhere, it's cheap kit, it's supposed to be a tool kit for your vehicle. And I find these to be pretty useless, honestly. I mean, it's definitely better than nothing. You've got a set of Torx bits, sockets for a spark plug, a few assorted sockets there, four total wrenches, little crescent wrench and screwdriver and some bits, and a spark plug gapping tool. So these are okay, but you know, if I've got to, if I've got a broken bolt on the tractor, or something, you know, bolts come loose, or a real repair, even a loose hydraulic line, if I have a hydraulic line come loose, this kit right here is not doing anything for me. Since I already have this, I may go ahead and leave this in here, but I think it's mostly all duplicated. Probably put this in one of the kids' cars. What I carry instead is a full wrench set you know it's just a basic cheap this is pittsburgh brand from harbor freight a lot higher likelihood of this solving a problem and then i've got a little cheap toolbox from walmart and in this i just have a variety of hand tools so we have a flashlight tire pressure gauge We've got scissors, heavy duty scissors, and a utility knife, crescent wrench. Actually, these are like lineman's pliers, wire cutters, channel locks, a big strong screwdriver for prying more than removing screws. Then we have an actual usable screwdriver. This is the kind with the four bits, large and small, flathead, large and small, 
Phillips, and of course the ends can also be used as a nut driver. The four and the six way screwdrivers are all I use. Also got a pocket knife. And a little pry tool. Yes, you could probably use that as a glass breaker. Although in an emergency situation, I don't know if I'm gonna think to dig all the way into my kit and find that. With that selection of hand tools, you can solve a lot of problems. Okay, then inside of here, I have a tire inflation tool, hex keys, a couple sets of gloves, some replacement battery terminals, tape measure, Gorilla Tape, and a basic socket set. And the last thing that I had thought of beforehand but forgot to put in there is a can of Rust Patrol. This is a competitor to WD-40. It's a really good lubricant. can also be used as a penetrating oil. So, like I said before, let me know in the comments if you think that I forgot anything in this kit that I should have included. That after going to get my son and not having what I needed, I really thought, let's put together a kit that has everything I could need. And in the time that's passed since then, I've been out doing something so many times and was asking the homeowner, hey, do you have a crescent wrench I could use? No good. So, let me know in the comments if there's anything you think that should be everyday carry that I forgot to mention. One more that's really obvious that I didn't mention in here is a first aid kit. And I think everyone should carry a first aid kit, but I keep mine in the cabin of the truck. Now, I've seen some videos where people had this much stuff all tucked throughout their truck. They were using the glove box, they were using the center console, under the front seats, under the back seat, behind the back seat. My truck is very limited on space to put things. There's no room under the back seat. I'm not crazy about it, but there's two big speakers under my seat. I have one little cubby under the seat. So there was no way I was going to tuck everything I think I need in there. I'd really like to have a nice built-in truck box, but this was a good option to spend very little money. I spent $40 on the box and 90% of everything else here I already had. A couple other things that aren't in this kit that are definitely worth mentioning probably the most important thing you can do is have a good set of tires on your vehicle. I just went, with winter coming up, I just went and got some high load range aggressive tread tires so that I'm prepared for whatever I need to do. I've also got a winch mounted on the front of the truck and kind of makes some of the stuff in here seem like a duplicate but you're not always going to be pulling from the front. So I like having the winch but it doesn't mean you don't need any other recovery gear. All right, so I appreciate you taking time to watch the video. I'll put links on the screen to a couple more of our videos, and I'll see you next time.